Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to use Terraform with AWS. And in this example, we're going to set up a budget with an AWS using Terraform to build and maintain it. So let's get started. I have a Visual Studio Code editor here. It's one of my favorites. And we're going to go through a few steps to get this environment all set up for doing the work that we want to do. The first is making sure that we have the proper tools installed. And we're going to need two. First is Terraform. So Terraform version, just make sure it's installed. I'm using 13.2, anything 12 or 13 should be fine. And the AWS CLI, so AWS dash dash version. And I think I'm running, yeah, 2046 is fine. I think anything above two is fine. The reason for this, Terraform, we need that to write the Terraform code and execute it. Uh, and then the AWS CLI is used to provision credentials. We're actually gonna make some default credentials on the box. And then when we go to use Terraform to build things in Amazon, it's gonna look for those credentials and use them. So we have the tools here, that's perfect. The next thing I wanna do is get some credentials that I can supply to the AWS CLI. For that, I'm going to IAM management, and I've gone ahead and drawn up my user. This is my user demo account here. We're gonna create an access key. It's about in the middle of the page. So create access key. And I'm gonna show everything on the screen. Normally you don't wanna show this stuff. This is like secret password kind of stuff, but that's okay, I'm gonna throw this away. So let's grab these two things. I'm gonna start with the access key. Switch back to code. Now I need to configure the AWS CLI. And again, this is just so we can give credentials to Terraform. So AWS configure. It's gonna need the access key. We just made that, so I'm gonna paste it in. The secret key, it's back on the other screen. Grab that. And let's do this in US East 1 and no special output format. That's it. At this point, we've made sure the tools are there and we have it properly configured so that we have credentials. And you can actually see that. If I go to the .aws folder within my user profile, you'll see these two files that get created if they're not there already. Uh, let's take a look at those. So the config is more about the configuration of the tool regions and things like that, as you can see on the screen. And then credentials show the access and secret keys for any profiles that you have here. So that's it for setting up credentials. We have everything set up for making Terraform actually do what it needs to do. So I'm gonna clear all this off and let's write some Terraform code. There's lots of ways you could do Terraform code. You can split out the providers and variables and stuff. And I actually do advocate for that, but we're gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna just make one file. We're, we're gonna make it right in the root of the code directory, call it main.tf, and we're gonna write the code here. We're gonna be working with local state. We're gonna be doing some very simple commands. It's kind of to bootstrap you so you can see how this works, but there's a lot more you can do here. I'm only scratching the surface. We're gonna need a couple things. Let me grab some code and we'll walk through it step by step. So I've got the first block of code is a Terraform block. This is literally telling Terraform, hey, I need you to do some things or configure yourself a certain way. And you can see I've got this required providers block here. This is letting Terraform know, I need you to grab these providers. I, in this case, I wanna work with AWS, so I need AWS's provider in order to translate my Terraform code into resources in Amazon. And then we have the fact that it's called AWS and we've got a source and version stanza here. Source is, where is it? In this case, it's on HashiCorp slash AWS. And the version I want is 3.5.0 or better, but no more than 4.0. That's why it has the little squiggly line there. It's a pessimistic operator, <laughs> which is kind of fun to say. So that's letting Terraform know that it needs to grab the AWS provider. Additionally, we're gonna need to tell the provider what region to use. And so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in there. So I'm saying, hey, AWS provider, you probably need to know the region. I'll supply a value for that. And that information is in the documentation for the provider that it needs to know the region. So we have Terraform and the provider configured. Last thing we're gonna need is to actually tell it to make a budget. Let's grab the budget code and there it is. So I've said, build a resource. That resource type is an AWS budgets budget because it's in the budgets group. And then the contextual name that I've given this resource is like and subscribe. <laughs> and so within that block, that resource block, I have the name of the budget that we want to build and some other information. Every month, I don't want to spend more than 500. And that's kind of it. Now we're ready to run some Terraform commands. So make sure to save your file. And I like to do it in this order. So the first thing I'm going to do is Terraform init. That's going to go grab the writer. We, we kind of need that to do anything. And if you accidentally forget to do an init, it will tell you. It'll say, hey, you need to init first. Cool, we're initialized. The folder that contains our code is now ready to be run. I'm gonna do two housekeeping items first though. The first is Terraform format or FMT. 
let's get to clean up the code. I can actually show you what that looks like. Let's say I had like too many spaces here. Or these were kind of off center. That's not considered proper formatting. So if I run this command again, you can see it fixed all those little imperfections in there and tells you main.tf has been modified. So that's kind of nice. I'm gonna clear my screen and let's do terraform validate. Terraform validate. That's gonna make sure that I have valid code. It kind of looks at the resource blocks and the Terraform blocks and everything and makes sure that I have the required information, things like that. So we've initialized, we formatted, and we validated. Now we can actually run it. There's two parts to this. You can do a plan and see what's gonna happen and then follow it up with an apply. Or you can just go straight into apply, look at it and say yes or no. Uh, I'll go through the proper way. Let's clear the screen one more time and do a Terraform plan. And what that's gonna do is look at all the resources that I wanna build and see what needs to be built. Now there's nothing built so far. There's no state file, there's no information. So it's telling me pretty plain and simple, you need to build all the things. This plan is going to create things and what it's gonna create is the budget contextually called like and subscribe and the name of the budget is monthly budget. So this is all the information of what's gonna get built out. This looks fine to me. I'm just gonna go ahead to Terraform apply. I could just do that if I wanted to, but I'm in the habit I like to plan first just to kind of see things. You get the same kind of experience with apply, especially if you don't supply a plan file to it. So I'm just gonna say yes, that, that looks good. However, before I click that button, let's switch back over and look at the budgets. Just to be clear, I refresh the page. There's no budgets here. There's no smoke and mirrors. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and say, yeah, I do want you to do that. So the provider is going to create that translation between the configuration we just wrote in Terraform and what needs to happen in AWS. And it took one second. It's, it's really quick. Uh, so I'll go back to budgets, click refresh, and there it is. So it's just that simple. At this point, if you need to make a change, make it in Terraform and rerun the plan and the apply or just apply those changes. Uh, but you don't wanna do this by hand. Another thing I'll point out before I go is that the Terraform state file is very important. So if you're using local state, like in this example, that TF state file is really important because that's kind of like a receipt. Terraform knows that it made all those changes and each time it's going to check in with those resources that get built to find out the reality and it's gonna compare that to the state file to see what needs to happen. So safeguard that state file. If I wanna make a change later, that's easy too. Let's go back to the code. Let's say, I don't know, it's been a great, great month. We have $700 or something like that. You just change it within the configuration, save the file. I'm gonna clear the screen one more time and I'll do another apply. And this time, instead of a create, it's gonna do a modify because we've made some changes. It's checking the state of reality and it's then checking the state file and saying, whoa, whoa, you asked for 700, but I only see 500. We obviously need to change that. So I'm gonna make that change and then go in there and you can see it's just one second. It's very, very quick. It doesn't take long at all. And we'll refresh that and we should now have a $700 budget. Hey, look at that. Awesome. So that's it, really easy to use. You basically just build out whatever you need. Use the AWS CLI as your credentials, or if you're doing things in automation, you can pass with environmental variables. I'll link to a blog post that has more information on this, but happy terraforming.